Hi guys, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to The Wandering Reader. Today I'm going to be doing the Try A Chapter tag. Um, this tag was originally created by um, the channel Book Paradise, so I will link her channel down below and the original video. Um, basically I wanted to do a version of this with the oldest books on my shelf, so the ones that I've had on my shelf for the longest. You guys know I have a massive TBR um, and that that doesn't particularly bother me but I was looking at my shelves the other day and um, thinking that there are some books on here that I've had on here for an awfully long time that I should really get around to reading um, sooner rather than later. So I've got five books that I'm going to um, talk about today. So how, how this is going to work is that I will talk about what the book's about go off, read the first chapter of that book and then come back and report back on um, what I thought about the first chapter and whether I liked it and then decide at the end of the video which one I'm going to read and uh, take on and read um, from, uh, from start to finish. So the first book that I'm going to talk about is The American Boy by Andrew Taylor. I think I've had this on my shelf for at least six years now um, and it was it's one of those sort of more popular uh, literary fiction books um, around the time that this was published. Let's just have a little look at when it was published. Um, 2003. So it's it's been around for a while now. I'll read you the back. It says England 1819. Thomas Shield, a new master at a school just outside London, is tutor to a young American boy and the boy's sensitive best friend Charles Frant. Drawn to France's beautiful, unhappy mother, Thomas becomes caught up in her family's twisted intrigues. Then a brutal crime is committed, with consequences that threaten to destroy Thomas and all that he has come to hold dear. Despite his efforts, S.H.I.E.L.D. is caught up in a deadly tangle of sex, money, murder and lies. A tangle that grips him tighter even as he tries to escape from it. And what of the strange American child at the heart of these macabre events? What is the secret of the boy named Edgar Allan Poe? So that sounds quite good. It sounds sort of thriller-esque um, and obviously a little bit of perhaps historical fiction. It mentions Edgar Allan Poe as well. So I'm going to go and read the first chapter of this and let you guys know what I think. So I'm back, I've read the first chapter of The American Boy, um, it was quite a short chapter so oh, I tend to look like books with shorter chapters, uh, so we had an eight page chapter at the beginning and in the chapter we met, um, it's told from the point of view of Thomas Shield and you're told there's a sort of contents bit at the beginning where we've got um, um, what we're going to have, so we start with the narrative of, of Thomas Shields. Uh, so we're reading from his point of view. He appears to be going to some sort of respectable house. When he arrives at the respectable house, he meets somebody called Sophia Frank. Um, he doesn't say hello, but he refers to her by her name, which means to me that he will get to know her later. And he seems to be quite struck by her. Um, and then he goes into the house and um, seems to be applying for a job with the um, with the gentleman there. I can't remember his name. What's his name? Um, Mr. Bransby. So they have a conversation about why um, he why Mr. Bransby should give Thomas a job, and it sounds like Thomas had, has had some sort of. Um, horrible or unsavoury things happened to him in his past like it mentions that he was in an asylum it mentions that um he's been a soldier and things like that um and then what i quite like is that the last line of the chapter is um and nor did i realize that mrs frant and edgar allen would lead me step by step towards the dark heart of labyrinth to a place of terrible secrets and the worst of crimes so that's really intriguing. So I quite like the opening chapter of that. I'm intrigued enough to continue. So we'll see whether that's the one I choose. The next one I've got here is War by Hugh Howey. And I think this is the first book in a trilogy. And I only found that out recently um, where I've seen it on a couple of people's channels. 
um, and sort of become a bit more intrigued by it. Um, I think I've had this one on my shelf for about four years now, so I'll read you what it says on the back. In a ruined and hostile landscape, in a future few have been unlucky enough to survive, a community exists in a giant underground silo. Inside, men and women live an enclosed life full of rules and regulations, but some people choose not to conform. These are the people who dare to hope and dream. These are the dangerous ones. Jules is one of these people. She may well be the last. So that kind of sounds sort of sci-fi, post-apocalyptic. Um, yeah, so I'll go and read the first chapter of that and report back on what I think. So I've read the first chapter of War by Hugh Howey. Um, this, the first chapter follows a man called Holston who was climbing some steps out of the silo that he lived in and it was sort of reflecting on uh, a little bit on what living in the silo was like and he talked about being young and wanting to investigate and go on adventures and being excited by living somewhere like that and then as you got older feeling like you were imprisoned by it. Um, he makes reference to his wife who died a few like, years earlier and he also makes reference to the fact that they um, he called it a lottery ticket they got this lottery ticket and then um, they were trying for a baby for a year and then after a year they had to give the lottery ticket to somebody else so it sort of seems like this is a world where you get one opportunity to have children and then that's it um, and he also talks about the fact that this is going to be his last day so as he's climbing these steps he talks about the fact that it's going to be the last time that he climbs them he sort of gets into what presumably is his work and it sounds a little bit like um, like he's a police officer or something like that because he talks about um, grabbing the keys to the holding cell. And then at the end of the chapter he asks his colleague to take him to the holding cell and then say, you need to go and get the mayor because I want to go outside and that's how the chapter ends. Um, so it sort of seems to me like you can't go outside in this world um, that something has happened to the earth which means that they have to live in these um, silos in order to survive so that is really really intriguing um, I love the writing in this already I think he, how he's got a really nice style just from what I've read and again it was quite a short chapter so I'm very intrigued by that one the next one I've got to show you is The Tenderness of Wolves by Steph Penny now, funny story about this, I saw a poster advertising this on the Tube in London when I was getting the Tube into university every day. So I finished university now 12 years ago. So um, yeah, this has been on my shelf for a very long time. Um, I was so intrigued by the poster for it um, that I knew I had to pick it up. So this says on the back, 1867, Canada. As winter tightens its grip on the isolated settlement of Dove River, a woman steals herself for the journey of a lifetime. A man has been brutally murdered and her 17-year-old son has disappeared. The violence has reopened old wounds and inflamed deep-running tensions in the frontier township. Some want to solve the crime, others seek only to exploit it. To clear her son's name, she has no choice but to follow the tracks, leaving the dead man's cabin and head north into the forest and the desolate landscape that lies beyond it. I think I was just so intrigued by the fact that it's set in such a bleak place. Um, and obviously you've got that kind of like the historical fiction aspect of it. And you've also got the fact that it's centered around um, a crime kind of reminding me a little bit I'm getting kind of like burial rites vibes from it but obviously not in the same sense as that so I will let you guys know what I think of the first chapter of this so I've read the first chapter of The Tenderness of Wolves um, I'm not quite sure whose perspective we're reading from um, because obviously it talks about the mother of the boy who disappeared so I don't think we're reading from her perspective at the beginning but um, it mentions an encounter with a 
Hunter in the local sort of convenience store and his name is Laurent Jamet and um, so the the narrator it meets him in this convenience store um, so, so we're sort of introduced to his character, talks about the fact that this guy is a hunter, he's got a wolf over his shoulder that he shot um, that I think he's selling and then um, a couple of weeks later the narrator goes to his house um, because he hasn't been around for a couple of weeks um, and he the door is unlocked and he walks into um, his bedroom and he thinks he's asleep so he sort of says you know get up you know wake up sort of thing and then he notices that he's got a gash on his neck and the flies are kind of around it and this guy is dead um, and then now that's the end of the chapter so we're obviously introduced to the murder or the seeming murder I suppose at the beginning in the opening chapter there are a few sort of nice descriptions of in here of the landscape so quite like the writing so far. I'm not as enamoured with it as I thought I would be. This book has always intrigued me, but for some reason I've never picked it up. I've always thought that I would love it. Um, but the opening chapter isn't giving me like massively good vibes, but then it's only the opening chapter, but yeah, so we'll see about that one. The next one I've got here is The Beach by Alex Garland. And of course, you must have heard about this because they turn this into a film of Leonardo DiCaprio. And in fact, I have seen the film a few times now. Um, but I've always been intrigued by the book. I've never read anything by Alex Garland before. Um, so this is a kind of really battered copy of it. I don't know where I picked this up, but it was clear, I clearly wasn't brand new. Um, so this says on the back, the Cow Sand Road, Bangkok, first stop on the backpacker trail. On Richard's first night there, a fellow traveller slits his wrist, leaving Richard a map to the beach. The beach is a legend among young travellers in Asia. White sand circling the lagoon, hidden from the sea. Coral gardens and freshwater falls surrounded by jungle. In this earthy paradise, it is rumoured a select community lives in blissful innocence. For Richard, haunted by the glamour of Vietnam War movies, a trek into unknown Thai territory is irresistible. He was looking for adventure. Now he's found it. So yeah, I, I really love the movie of this. Um, yeah, it's a great story. So I've always wondered about the book. Um, so I'll go and have a little read of the first chapter of that. So I've just read the first chapter of The Beach and been quite good uh, with really short chapters because this one was about eight pages as well, it's a bit of a trend there. Um, and so far we've been introduced to the narrator who's just landed in Bangkok and um, he checks into what I presume is a hostel um, and he tries to go to sleep and then um, at about two o'clock in the morning the guy who is next door comes back and he starts mumbling something about the beach and then um, there's a gap in so th there's a gap like at the top of his room covered by a mosquito net which um, yes yeah, so his room is not totally blocked off so the guy sticks his head through this mosquito net and throws a, a joint into his room and says have a bit of that and you were listening to me it starts accusing of him of li overhearing his conversation what did you hear and that sort of thing so he seems like a bit of a, a strange guy um, and that, that's basically it so um, I can sort of see how it's feeding into the film so far so um, yeah I'm intrigued by that because I know the story already and I just want to kind of compare the film to the book um, so I think this will be quite a nice summary read as well so yeah there's that one and then the last one that i've got here is her fearful symmetry by audrey niffenager i read the time traveler's wife ages ago now god what what seven or eight years ago maybe something like that i can't remember i picked up her second novel um shortly after i'd read uh, the time traveler's wife i think this came out i think this is her second novel well, I don't know, maybe her fourth. She's got a couple of other titles in there as well. So, and um, this says on the back, When Elspeth Noblin dies, she leaves her beautiful flat overlooking Highgate Cemetery to her twin nieces, Julia and Valentina Paul. 
on the condition that their mother is never allowed to cross the threshold. But until the solicitor's letter falls through the door of their suburban American home, neither Julia nor Valentina knew their aunt existed. The twins hope that in London their own separate lives can finally begin, but they have no idea that they have been summoned into a tangle of fraying lives from the obsessive compulsive crossword setter who lives above them to their aunt's mysterious and elusive lover who lives below them and works in the cemetery itself. As the twins unravel the secrets of their aunt, who doesn't seem quite ready to leave her flat even after death, Niffenager weaves together a delicious and deadly ghost story about love, loss and identity. A ghost story? Sounds very gothic. So um, I'll go and check out the first chapter of that and let you know what I think. So I actually read the first couple of chapters of this because they were only a few pages long so I thought I might as well. In the first chapter of this we see um, a woman called Elspeth who um, dies and her partner comes back from getting a cup of tea I think and she's died. Um, we're sort of seeing, she's sort of looking down at her own body yeah as a ghost and kind of that sort of thing so we we meet her and uh, presumably her lover or whatever and then the second chapter is told from Edwina's point of view and Edwina has been receiving these letters every week um, and Jack her husband has hired a detective to see sort of where she's going and what she's getting up to um, the detective follows her around when she goes and gets these letters every week and she makes it very known to him that she doesn't like that um, and the last letter that she receives is um, from her sister Elspeth who tells her that this is the last letter I'm going to send you um, you know basically implying that she's going to die and she says in the letter that she's going to leave everything to her nieces so Edwina's daughters um, and she mentions in the letter, I can't remember the exact wording of it, what does she say? Um, I didn't leave you anything, you got to live my life, that's enough. Instead I'm experimenting, I've left the whole lot to the twins, I hope they'll enjoy it. So you kind of get the implication that something happened which means that maybe these sisters were estranged or, um, you know, yeah, that, that sounds a little bit intriguing. I'm really, really intrigued by this one actually, so much so that I think this is going to be the one that I take forward and read the whole of. Um, but having read the first chapter of all of these, there's nothing on here that I would say I'm kind of desperately unhappy about and not intrigued by at all um, but like I said I think this is going to be the one that I read next. It's a bit of a weird read for this time of year but then hey ho you can read anything you like can't you. Um, but I'd love to have a chat with you in the comments below. Have you read this? What did you think of it? And have you read any of the others and do you think I should get to them a bit more quickly than I have done so far? Because yeah some of these have been on my shelf for quite some time. Uh, so I'd love to have a chat with you in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.